Bali is a fantastic and beautiful destination, but it is also extremely popular and very crowded. And if you don't know exactly what you're doing or where to go, you might end up feeling a little bit disappointed with your trip, as Bali is also a very hyped and perhaps an overly romanticized destination. And there are a lot of pitfalls when traveling in Bali, and there are certainly areas that I would recommend over others. So here I have gathered my experiences, my knowledge, and all my videos from from traveling and living in Bali over the past couple of years. And hopefully it can help you get the most out of your trip. I'll be giving you some great tips that you should know for your visit. And we'll look at different areas in Bali that you might consider visiting. Both the more popular destination and also the very off the beaten path destinations. And I'll show you some must visit places. We'll talk about prices, cost of living and how much you should expect to spend on your trip. And look at some different hotels in different areas and in different price points so you can see how far your money goes and a lot more. This won't be a quick five minute video but hopefully I can manage to cover some of the most important aspects of traveling Bali while showing you some of the island's beauty. There will be timestamps below if there are certain parts that you're interested in so you can jump around a bit but um, let's just get started and explore Bali. need to get into Indonesia and the entry requirements can well change all the time so make sure to check up on this before you book your trip. At the time of recording this you no longer need to be vaccinated against a certain virus so now it's probably more about looking at what visa you can get. A lot of countries are eligible for a visa on arrival which allows you entry for up to 30 days and this visa is also extendable by another 30 days while you are in the country. But make sure to check if your country is eligible for the visa on arrival. You can either get the visa online before you go or you can just get it in the airport when you arrive. I recommend getting it online before you go and then you can probably skip a queue in the airport. Bali basically has a rainy season and a dry season. So if you want a bit more certainty for nice weather, dry season is April through October and November through March is the rainy season. In general, rainy season sees fewer tourists, but as you can probably guess, the weather can be a bit more hit or miss. But just because you go in dry season doesn't mean that you're guaranteed to have sunny days all the time. I remember a time in June I was in Ubud and we had 10 days of straight hardcore rain and another time in January where for two weeks straight there was nothing but blue skies. It can really go both ways whether you're visiting in rainy season or dry season of course with a higher chance of more blue skies during the dry season but I don't think you should let that scare you away if you're only able to go during the rainy season and if you are too worried about the weather during your trip just try not to be. Often it will rain for an hour or two and then you'll get blue skies after. And don't trust too much on the weather forecasts as they will likely say rain all day, every day, which is probably also true as it is likely raining somewhere in Bali. So I think you can pretty much go to Bali anytime during the year and have a great time. But perhaps try to avoid the bigger holidays as it can get super crowded on the island. How long should you stay in Bali? Probably as long as possible. Even though the island is not huge, there's just so much to do and to see. So you will have to prioritize and figure out what you like, what you would want to see and which areas you would prefer to stay in. If you're flying in from say Europe or America, I probably wouldn't stay less than 10 days. Two to three weeks would be a great amount of time to stay here, if you can, of course. also just want to share a couple of things that I think you should avoid doing in Bali. So the first is taking these very tourist trips. Of course this really depends on how you like to travel and what you are able to do. But these very you know set tourist trips where you get picked up in a car or even a minibus get driven around to some temples, waterfalls. In my opinion it's just really not a great way to experience Bali. A lot of people take the exact same trips so when you arrive at the waterfall it's just incredibly crowded and you will be spending a lot of time in the car in traffic. Now if you do want to go on a day trip and see several amazing places talk to the driver about doing perhaps a custom itinerary so that you can avoid the worst traffic and crowds and better yet leave us early in the morning as possible. 
next thing I recommend you not do is to stay in just one place. So if you do arrive and go to Changgu, stay a couple of days and then move on to the next place. There is just so much more to Bali than just Changgu. And the final point here is just to behave. There's been so many stories lately about tourists showing up and doing weird and bad stuff. Just don't be that person. Be nice and respectful and, well, I guess just a good person. Let's talk about money. In more medium to, I guess, high-end hotels and restaurants, you can usually pay with your credit card. But a lot of places do only accept cash, so you will likely need to use an ATM. Just be aware that there can be a small fee on your withdrawal and that the amount you can withdraw can vary and it's usually not that high. I recommend withdrawing some money when you arrive in the airport and using one of the major bank's ATMs, as you will have no nasty surprises there. I'll put up the names here on a few that I recommend. And here's a pro don't do like Adam tip. So the ATMs in Bali dispenses cash first and then your card, which is the exact opposite of what I'm used to. So after a long flight and not sleeping for 24 hours, of course I lost my card my first night in Bali. So be aware of that and well, you should be bringing more than one card anyways. Changu is definitely the place to be here in Bali. But should you stay here? Well... Okay, so the boring answer is that it depends. It depends on what you're looking for in your trip to Bali. But I think the mistake a lot of people make is coming and staying in Changu for their entire trip to Bali. And when I have talked to people or read about people's experiences here in Bali, the people who have had, I guess, a bad experience or a negative experience in Bali, they've pretty much all just stayed in Changu the whole time. But of course, since so many people come here, there must be something great about it, right? So first, I'm gonna mention all the great things about Changu and why perhaps you should stay here. And after that, I'll talk about all the, well, bad things about Chenggu and perhaps why you shouldn't stay here. And in the end, I'll give my own personal recommendation on what you should do. So first of all, Chenggu is pretty developed now. There's been just loads of constructions over the past few years. So now there is basically everything you need. So that means it's very convenient and very comfortable staying here. Like you can get all your Western amenities within just a few minutes. You can basically get anything delivered right to your door. You have air conditioning everywhere. There's a doctor around every corner and there's loads of supermarkets, even with imported products from Europe and the US and Australia so that you can buy all the products from back home. And for some people, that's pretty great, right? You can get everything you need. You go on vacation, you're just relaxing. Everything is how you want it to be, expect it to be, and you don't really have to think about a lot of things. If you are into partying, this is also the place to be. There are loads of bars, clubs, beach clubs, and just a lot of people partying all the time. There are also just countless of restaurants and cafes and you can get pretty much any type of food that you can think about and a lot of it is just insanely good there are also just a ton of gyms around here if you want to go and work out a little bit or jump in an ice bath or go to the sauna or those kind of health things but i will say the gyms are just insanely expensive i'm not sure how this actually works here in bali why they are so expensive but you can easily pay 20 to 30 us dollars for a day pass so to go to the gym once, that's basically what I pay for a whole month back in Copenhagen, which is a very expensive city. And that's pretty much for the same standard of gym. There are some local gyms around that are quite a bit cheaper, but honestly, they have also raised their prices quite a bit. And the equipment is just usually not that great. And if you're into shopping, this is probably also a great spot for you as there are lots of cool shops and boutiques scattered all around Changu. Another thing that's pretty great about Changu is just the amount of amazing villas and hotels there are here. It's very easy to find a beautiful and unique place to stay, like this cool villa that I'm in right now. Now, 
this part of Bali might not have the best and most beautiful beaches. They're actually often pretty dirty and the water is not like super nice unless you're into surfing. But the beaches here in Canggu still have a very nice and unique vibe, especially if you go for sunset. It's just a lot of people chilling, hanging out, walking their dogs or just having a beer and playing some games on the beach. Chengdu is also pretty great if you're a digital nomad. I mean, this is probably the area where most digital nomads are staying. And that's probably due to a lot of the reasons that we have already talked about. And also the Wi-Fi is pretty great and stable around here. And you have loads of cafes and co-working spots that you can work from. And of course, since there's so many of these digital nomad types around here, there's also a pretty good community. And you know, you can meet like-minded people, I guess. So should you stay in Chengdu? Well, if you're staying long term, I think it's a pretty good place to be and to have a base. And if you are coming on a vacation, you should go here if you're looking to party, if you're looking to go shopping, to go eat a lot of Western food. And yeah, that's probably it. And even if these things are exactly what you want to do, I would urge you to consider looking just a bit outside of Chengdu, as you can then avoid some of the negatives that we'll talk about in just a minute. But perhaps look at the area of Sese, which is just like a 10 or 15 minute scooter ride away from like here, the center of Chengdu. So you're still very close to everything, but yeah, you can avoid quite a bit of the negatives. from Bali and honestly this is not a bad spot to be having a morning coffee just surrounded by the rice fields enjoying the sunset here that's a perfect way to start the day that really all comes down to the area that I'm staying in which I think might be the best place for you to stay in Bali if you want to be close to all the action all the good restaurants I mean close to the tourist hotspot but not in the middle of it so you'll be away from the craziness and busyness and the horrible traffic and you can be here surrounded by rice fields enjoying the quietness and a bit more of an authentic feel in Bali. What is the the ceremony they're yeah. doing here? Ceremony. What is it for? For the new, new house in India. Ah, for, so they build a new house yeah. and then they have a ceremony for? Yeah. Ah, cool. See you. What I mean that all sounds pretty great so far, right? So what's not so great about staying in Chengdu? Well, the first thing or the first complaint that you'll probably often hear is that the traffic is horrible. And that's true. It's actually pretty insane, especially during rush hour in the morning or later in the afternoon. You can just get completely gridlocked for 30 minutes, an hour just to go a very short distance. But pretty much all throughout the day, traffic is pretty bad, especially if you're in a car. And so that's why I really, really don't recommend you staying in Chengdu if you want to do a lot of trips to visit other parts of Bali, because you can easily spend just an hour or two just to get out of Bali. So if you're doing like a day trip, most of your time will be spent sitting in the car, stuck in traffic. And at the same time, Chengdu is not very walkable. Well, this is probably true for most parts of Bali. If you don't ride a scooter yourself, you probably have to use some kind of transportation to get to most places, even if you're just going out to eat. And Chengdu has actually also become quite expensive. And of course, it makes sense, you know, a lot of people want to come here, so there's higher demand. So the hotels, the restaurants can all raise their prices. But that's also another complaint that I often hear from people who came here and perhaps didn't like it so much, is that it was way more expensive than they had thought it to be. As you usually hear about Bali being like a very affordable paradise. And the truth is, it still is very much an affordable paradise if you just don't spend all your time here in Chengdu. Accommodation is just way more expensive than average. You can still find some good deals here and there, of course, but in general, the prices are pretty high compared to other places around Bali. And for food, it's pretty much the same as most of the restaurants, cafes around here are like catered towards, well, Westerners. So they just have pretty high prices 
compared to if you're eating at more local restaurants. But in turn, there aren't actually a lot of local varongs, the local restaurants left around here in Canggu. But if you can find them, you can still get some amazing Indonesian food at very, very affordable prices. Think like one to two dollars per meal. But probably the worst thing about Canggu, at least in my opinion, is that it just doesn't really feel like you're in Bali. Because of all of this development, all these cool hotels, restaurants and villas, it just feels like you're in Australia or Europe or the US. And it also just feels like that when you're walking or driving down the street, as most of the people you will see here are foreigners. So I just think Canggu really doesn't have that local Bali magic. But luckily you can get this Bali magic in so many other places on this island. So let's move on to, I guess, my recommendations about staying in Bali and if you should stay here in Canggu. And as I mentioned in the beginning, it just, it really depends on what exactly you're looking for and why you're coming here. I mean, if you're just quickly flying in from Australia on a little weekend trip to go partying, yeah, this is probably where you want to be. But if you're flying from halfway across the world to really experience Bali, experience the culture and meet the local people, don't stay here in Cancun. But honestly, let's say you're coming here for a two or three week trip. What I recommend you do is that you stay here for the first few nights when you land in the airport, because we are still pretty close to the airport here. So it can take maybe an hour or something. And of course you can really get stuck in traffic on the way, but it is a pretty good place to start your trip. Like you can start out pretty relaxed. Everything is comfortable and familiar and you can like get settled. You can beat the jet lag. You can get a local SIM card maybe rent a scooter. Everything is very easily accessible and you can just get your bearings and get ready to explore the rest of Bali because that really is my biggest recommendation that you should get out there, get away from Canggu and go out and really explore Bali and everything that this island has to offer because it is so much more than just the cool beach clubs and beautiful villas. Today we're gonna check out a $15 hotel and a $150 hotel to see just what you can get for your money here on this island. Right now I'm standing in the $150 hotel, which is actually more of a private villa. But before we check this place out, let's start right here in the $15 hotel. Now when we booked this, I honestly didn't expect a lot. But now we've stayed here a full week and I can say that I've really enjoyed our stay here and for $15 per night, this is a bargain and really shows the value for money that you can get in some places here in Bali. But let's check out what the $15 hotel looks like. Coming into the hotel room, it looks like a pretty standard hotel. Although I will say the room is actually very, very spacious. Of course, we got a very large bed here and it's actually very comfortable. I mean, of course, it's nothing special, but I mean, we got everything we need, really. A small little desk, makeup desk, closet. And out here we got the balcony and the bathroom as well. There's a TV for those kind of people who actually uses those in a hotel and an aircon, which is always nice as it does get really, really hot. And you can probably already get the idea a little bit here. The view you get from this $15 hotel is actually amazing. Having rice terraces as the view from your balcony is just so iconic for Bali. And to get it in a $15 hotel, I'd say it's pretty spectacular. And here we just have the bathroom now. The sink is outside as I guess there just wasn't room enough inside. And perhaps the bathroom is a little bit small, but I mean, it's perfectly fine. The only slightly annoying thing is when you take a shower, everything just gets super wet and that's no real proper ventilation. So it's just gonna be wet all day. But I mean, again, for $15 per night, I think that's a compromise I'm willing to make. And another thing that I've noticed you know how in restaurants, it's always a good sign when you see a lot of local people dining at a certain restaurant. Like that's always a sign that, you know, they must have some good food here. I don't know if the same goes for hotels, but almost every other guest at this hotel we have seen have been Indonesians. So maybe that tells you something. So right outside our room, we also have a little balcony and uh, here Sally is just working. Hi Sally. And we did move the one chair out to the other one. 
just because it's nice to sit out there and enjoy the view. But because we have the room in the end, we also have a really nice view from this side. And we can actually walk straight down to the rice field. So let's do that and see how it looks down there. And perhaps I'll even throw up the drone so we can see what this property and the whole area looks like from above. Like having views of rice terraces is of course like nothing very special here in Bali. But if you are staying in the very popular areas like, like Changu, it's getting more and more difficult because people are building everywhere. And of course they have to get the land from somewhere. And usually that means taking the land that was, well, rice fields and building hotels and villas there instead. So having all of this as our view for just $15 per night, I'd say is a pretty good deal. Now let's just talk about the location of this hotel as the location of course always plays a big part in especially the price. But we are actually in the very popular Changu area. But the reason that perhaps this hotel is a little bit less expensive than hotels you usually find in Changu is that I guess we're in the more northern part of Changu and we're not like right next to all the fancy western cafes and restaurants. We're just like five or ten minutes away from those places and I think 15 minutes away from the beach. So it's just to say if you look just a little bit outside the very very popular spots you can really find some great deals. Of course the downside here is that you'll have to use some sort of transportation to get where you want to go. Now we have rented and drive a scooter so it's really easy and no problem for us. In fact, I enjoyed even more to stay a bit outside the very busy area as out here is just a bit more calm and the traffic is not that crazy out here. But if you don't ride a scooter, I mean, you have to order a taxi or a grab as there's not really a lot of places that you can walk to from here. Welcome back to the $150 hotel. So this is actually a two bedroom private villa with its own private pool i mean everything you could really need for a very comfortable stay in bali so let's have a tour around this place welcome to our little private oasis here in bali honestly this whole space out here is the reason that we wanted to stay in this villa i mean we've got a huge private pool here and just this awesome awesome outdoor space and of course we have the beautiful villa but besides that we also just have a fantastic views of the rice terraces here in the background and I mean we basically don't have any neighbors there are two other villas like in this little villa complex one on like each side so behind us here but to be honest we can't see or hear them at all so it just feels super private and secluded so right here behind me is the main building in this villa but if I just turn around quickly, you can see that there's a smaller building down in this end. And honestly, this design, in my opinion, is actually pretty genius. So you have a private bedroom with its own private bathroom down in this little building. And over in the main building, you have the living room, the kitchen, and another bedroom up on the top floor with its own private bathroom again. So it's really great if you're like traveling as a family or with friends, so you can have your own private spaces. And perhaps you can see that over on the other side of the wall, way over there, there are some other buildings. I mean, we have a pretty tall wall here, so no one can really look in and you just got that complete privacy. But why don't we start with having a look inside the, I guess, the second bedroom. It has a little terrace out here where you can just get your morning coffee and enjoy this beautiful view in the morning. So this is it, there's not really a lot to it. It's a very minimalist design they have with these like kind of concrete walls and a lot of wood everywhere. And you'll see this style repeated also over in the main building. And the bathroom is right out here. Very nice, big, big shower. And of course your sink and a pretty big wardrobe to store all your stuff. But let's head over to the other side and check out the main building. So this is the main building of this villa. And I mean, this place is pretty huge. So first up, we have this little dining area over here. And again, just all the time with this beautiful view of the rice terraces in the background. And right next to it, 
actually a pretty large kitchen and it really has everything you need if you want to be able to cook. To be honest, we haven't done any cooking yet. Then you just have some coffee, a coffee machine, pretty good sized fridge. This one over here is probably one of my favorite things in this villa. Just a water dispenser. And it's pretty brilliant as you can just easily buy loads and loads of plastic bottles of water here in Bali as you can drink the tap water here. And over by the door and the windows, a little couch and a small coffee table. And then we have the stairs heading upside to the master bedroom. So this is the master bedroom and it is enormous. Probably the most important thing here is the huge bed, which is just very comfortable. And the second most important thing is perhaps the view you get from up here and from the bed. Again, just overlooking these rice terraces. If we look up, we can see the kind of awesome design of the roof and it just makes the room feel so big. And there's a little desk over here, which has been a really awesome place for me to sit and just do some editing and getting a bit of work done. Just the views you get from up here on the balcony. But as you can see, it's just totally empty. They really should add like some chairs and a little table out here so you can take your morning coffee up here. And right out here, we have the master bathroom. Also with a nice big closet right here. And this bathroom is also just very huge with two sinks and a very large shower. And again, you have a window which opens up right out to the rice fields. So hopefully this gives you a bit of an idea of just how far your money will get you here in Bali. Whether you're traveling on a budget or want like a fancy villa like this. And yes, Bali is very, very popular. So prices in the very touristy areas have gone up quite a lot. But if you look just outside, you can find some amazing deals. Welcome to Ubud, the cultural and spiritual center here in Bali. But it is also a bit of a tourist hotspot and it does get just super busy around here. So for the next three days, I'm gonna be trying to have as much fun as possible here in Ubud while getting off the beaten path. Okay, we're gonna try something very stupid. In this temple special for children. So I won't be showing you just the top 10 most popular things to do here in Ubud. There are plenty of other videos, guides and blogs all about that. I'm going to be showing you some beautiful places and some great things to do, all without the crowds. And the very first thing we're going to get up to here in Ubud is a bit of a classic. We're going to go to the monkey forest. But we're actually not going to go to the, I guess, the main monkey forest, the one that's like, well, the famous one, that, the one that's in the middle of Ubud. There is another monkey forest, just like a 20, 30 minute ride outside of Ubud. And supposedly it is a lot less busy, it's cheaper. And because there are not like so many tourists, the monkeys are a bit more chill and probably won't try to steal all your stuff all the time. And it is called Sange Monkey Forest. So let's head there now. Made it to Sangay Monkey Forest. It cost 75,000 per person to get in here, and we actually cut a bag of well, some water and some peanuts to feed the monkey. So, oh, look at this guy. No. <laughs> Definitely not very crowded here at all. Here you go. <laughs> it, that was pretty cute. I think it's a bit weird that they give us food to give to the monkeys because they really like, ah, 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 ah buddy. Come on. <laughs> but it's beautiful here. Like forest and a lot of temples and everything. And very quiet, not a lot of people. 
Is he following me? <laughs> oh, now the other guys are coming. <laughs> okay, that's a feast. Can have three. <laughs> ah. Hey, oh, Satan! Jesus Christ, man. Like when you stick to the main roads, there are a lot of the, I guess the employees that work here and they will kind of help scare off the monkeys if they start jumping you. But if you go down the smaller paths, you might be in a situation like us and you're all alone getting jumped by these big monkeys. It is a little bit scary. Is it a little bit stupid that they like give us a bunch of food for the monkeys? I don't know. It's just, you ask for it. Yeah, like we're asking, like we're just. I, I'm not gonna hold that thing. Yeah. And there are some more. <laughs> hey, look out! Open your hand! Open your hand! Yeah! Nope. They just want more all the time. Okay, let's go. <laughs> let's go. Oh, now we are getting chased by a whole group of them. Okay, now we ditched the little bag we got with the peanuts and the water. And that has really helped. You just got to show them, open your hands like that. Then the monkeys will know that you don't have any food and they will pretty much ignore you. So that really helped us. <laughs> I feel like they shouldn't have given us the food and they should have told us about the hand trick, hand trick like at the entrance. Yeah. <laughs> we just wave at all the monkeys. Now they, now they just ignore us. <laughs> Boy! Bro. Hey. Get down. <laughs> what is he doing? Bro, hey, hey, hey. go down. Yeah, it didn't work before. No, no, no. Don't panic. Okay. <laughs> I guess I spoke too soon. The tricks didn't really work with this guy. He wanted a free ride. <laughs> he wanted a free ride. He was just chilling. <laughs> okay, we got incoming. No food. No food. I'll show you. No food. No food. No food. Okay, so a little conclusion, because we've also been to the, I guess, the main monkey forest in the middle of Ubud two times. So now we can compare it a little bit. Oh my God. Of course, in the one in Ubud, there's a lot more people. It's also very nice and very jungle-like. In that respect, I think they're pretty similar, like very cool jungle vibe and a lot of monkeys everywhere. But here, because there's a lot less people, I mean, you are going to get a lot more attention from the monkeys, especially since they give you all the food here. So perhaps if you don't want to get super jumped, just like don't take the food at the entrance and just walk in there with open hands. But definitely a lot more of an experience, I would say, compared to the other one. It felt a lot more touristy in the main park, but this one was very monkey authentic. <laughs> well, we made it back to the hotel in one piece. And speaking of hotels, like there's plenty of just amazing hotels here in Ubud. And it really goes for like any budget. You can find very affordable like guest houses and just cheap hotels. And then you have like the very fancy, super nice hotels like this one. So let me just like change out of my monkey clothes here and then I'll show you around this place very quickly. It's actually a very spacious bedroom. And in this beautiful kind of Balinese style design, so we just have a little seating area right here and also a little couch, hi Sally. And of course, you have a gorgeous view from up here and you're just in the middle of nature out here. It's really beautiful. So right out here, we have a very, very large bathroom. And of course here, the real selling point is this beautiful bathtub again with the same gorgeous view. And especially this shared pool area is really gorgeous. But it started to rain quite a bit here in the afternoon. So we decided to chill a bit in the hotel for the rest of the day and then head up to the rooftop for a sunset drink. 
not a bad way to end the first day in Ubud. 42nd day, I wanted to get a little more active and see some of the incredible nature Ubud has to offer. So the first stop of today is a bit of a nature walk. This is a perfect place to come like early in the morning for sunrise if you are one of those type of people. But it's a bit of an escape of the very busy Ubud to just get out in nature and have a walk. It's basically a, a little hike. It's very nice. But as you can see, like now I'm just heading my way to this place called Kambuhan Ridge Walk. And the first thing we will see is just this huge, beautiful temple here. So you got his temple on the one side and just the rainforest and a river down here on the other side. Last time I was here was probably a year or two ago. And you can see they kind of cut down a lot of the plants and trees right here. So you get a bit of a view over the valley because well, the, yeah, the last time I was here was just completely overgrown. So you couldn't really see out into the valley, which of course is a shame. So I guess it's nice that they're kind of doing a little bit to, well, take care of it and make it an even better experience for the people coming here. And yeah, I mean, there's like a few people kind of doing the hike, but it's really not crowded at all. And it actually kind of surprised me just how busy Ubud actually is these days, even though now we're in, in off season, in the rainy season. So can imagine how busy it must be during the summer months. But this is just a nice little escape if you want to get away from the, all the scooters and the busy streets. I'll also be honest, the best views of, of this place is probably not from when you're actually walking it. It's a bit cheating perhaps, but it's when you're flying the drone and you can see this place from above. So let's send up the drone and see what it looks like. But maybe you just want to walk through some rice fields instead of walking on a ridge. Well, I got you as well. I'm right now at this beautiful little, I mean, I guess it's a hike or just like a road or path through all of the rice fields here. And it's really nice little walk again. And you get to see some beautiful rice terraces. You can walk around and like see there's a lot of shops and restaurants that are really nice around here. Now, the one thing that is perhaps a little bit Annoying here is that, I mean, it is just a normal little road. Cars can't pass here, but a lot of motorbikes can, and they will because, I mean, people are going to wherever they're going. So you will get like passed a lot by motorbikes when you're walking here. And I really like it compared to the other one, Kampuhan Ridge Walk, where, I mean, you get to see a bit more of the daily life. You know, people going about that day, working in the rice terraces, working in their little shops and everything. And again, same as with the other hike, completely free to just get here i mean it is just a normal road so you don't have to pay anything you can just park your bike or just walk here and yeah have a walk around but if you thought we'd be done walking for today you'd be wrong We've got one more spot right around the corner i want to check out and really all these three spots are actually just within a few hundred meters of each other. So if you do want to get a lot of exercise, you can just do them all kind of back to back, but you can also spread them out over your few days here, or, you know, just pick the ones you like the best. And really, I think it's because Ubud is probably, well, of the touristy areas in Bali, it's the one that's probably the most walkable. You know, you got sidewalks in a lot of places and you got a lot of these kind of hikes and treks a bit where you can get like off the, of the maiden roads. Of course, I mean, sidewalks are not in perfect condition everywhere, even if they do have them. So we're gonna walk up this bunch of stairs right here. I think this area is called Penestenan. You know, again, it's just a little bit off the main road. You just get a nice little chill area where it's nice to walk around and, you know, look at the shops and all the cafes and everything. And you know, it's not very busy at all. Hello. Thank you. So I just had a great little stroll around this area. No real goal or direction, just walking around and seeing where I would end up. I think actually Ubud is one of the only places here in Bali that I actually recommend you just kind of walk around and get lost a little bit, you know? This is something I really like to do when traveling in like bigger cities and most places around the world. 
but really Bali is just not really set up for walking in general but in Ubud you know it is possible and there are a lot of these smaller side streets where you can get lost so you can actually stay in, in Ubud without like having a motorbike to get around or get a taxi all the time at least if you're go going like shorter distances it is possible okay so I actually had one more stop planned for today but I got a little bit of a stomach thing so I ended up staying in the hotel the plan was to visit some amazing rice terraces now the famous ones to visit are just a 30 minute drive outside of Ubud and they're called Tegalalang rice terraces. And I mean, this place is beautiful, but again, I wanted to find the less touristy alternative and Tegalalang is very touristy. So the spot I wanted to visit is called Yatilui rice terraces. It is equally as beautiful and it is also a UNESCO heritage site. It is a bit further away though, about an hour or so from Ubud, but you won't see the same crowds here. But I will have to take a rain check on that as on the third and final day in Ubud, I have some different plans. There are just loads and loads of waterfalls in the area surrounding Ubud. But of course, there aren't really any in Ubud center. So you will have to get some sort of transportation to go out and visit these different waterfalls. <laughs> and the best way to do that is to rent a scooter and drive yourself. But of course, the alternative is to get a driver to take you around to the waterfalls you want to visit. You can do like specific tours or you can hire a driver for the day. But a lot of the tourists who are staying in Ubud are going pretty much on the same tours and visiting the same waterfalls. So you can imagine there are like a few waterfalls that are just super, super popular, but these places get super crowded and like you can wait in line just to be able to get up close to the waterfall and maybe get a picture. Unless of course you go early in the morning, like as soon as they open. I'm not really a fan of that. And if you're like me, you would like to explore a bit more off the beaten path. And that's what we're gonna do today. Try and find some waterfalls that are a little less known and that are not full of tourists. First waterfall of the day is called Uma Anyar. And it was like 15,000 to enter. And there were a few locals out there just explaining everything, uh, how it works and where to get down. I think it's just some locals in the village who are kind of operating and taking care of this waterfall, which is always cool. So now I'm just walking down the path to the waterfall here and it is actually really nice. And this waterfall is actually very close to perhaps the most famous waterfall around here, which is called Tegenungang waterfall. And you can easily like see this by looking at the reviews on Google Maps. So for example, the Tegenungang, the very famous one, has like 30,000 reviews on Google Maps. And this one probably has a couple of hundred. So you can really see the difference there in how many people are visiting it. Uma Anyar waterfall. There's a little changing room right here in case you need it. So it's like pretty much a whole river here, just carved into the rock. It looks really cool. Just see the waterfall on the right side here. So let's just head over first to the left side so we can get a good look at the waterfall. It looked like there was one more kind of up behind it. Okay, we're gonna try something very stupid and cross right above the waterfall here. We got help from a nice little local guide here. Oh, up here is the secondary waterfall, which is really nice. It's really powerful, actually. That kind of runs down into the first one. So it's really cool. And you can see it's like this little pool thing where these girls are chilling down here. And you can also swim a little bit down there. If you're looking for a cool waterfall, a bit more off the beaten path, this one is definitely recommended. Look at this guy, look at this guy. That's some kind of monitor lizard, maybe. And we are on the way to the second waterfall. And this one is called Sumampan waterfall and it was literally a three minute drive down the road from the other waterfall and it cost 20,000 per person to enter. Sometimes when visiting these waterfalls the hike to actually get there is one of the best parts. I mean just look at the nature here. It's fantastic. Okay yeah the stairs are getting really steep over here. So this one is definitely not super accessible and <laughs> Okay, this is really cool. So to, in order to get over to the waterfall, you actually have to cross the river here and you can use this rope 
to get over there and not get dragged along the river. So I don't think I'm gonna cross over to the waterfall today. I have all my camera gear and everything. But can like head down along the river here and there's some people down there. So maybe there's something nice to do down there or just chill out next to the river. So let's go check that out. A pretty gorgeous spot out here in nature if you just wanna go for a dip in the river and just chill out. There's loads of space. You can drop a towel and just hang out. You can definitely visit these two waterfalls together if you want to escape the crazy crowds of some of the more popular ones. This one here, there were a few more people, but I mean, we are like in the middle of the day, so this is the worst time to go here. If you go a little earlier, there will probably be no other people here. There are loads and loads of fantastic waterfalls all within like 30 minutes to an hour of Ubud, but I definitely really recommend seeking out some of the lesser visited ones. I should just have a more chill and relaxed experience instead of like waiting in line to go down the stairs and waiting in line to take a, pip, a picture or get in the water. At least for me that ruins the experience a bit. But that's enough waterfall hunting for today. Now it's time to explore the more religious side of Ubud a little bit. So I'm headed to a temple. And I have now made it to Goa Raja or the elephant temple it is called. And this is one of the very popular temples here around Ubud. But because it's so popular, I mean, a lot of tourists come here and then as you saw out of the entrance, there's a lot of shops and they all try to sell you a sarong because to enter the temple, you need to wear, wear a sarong. But you shouldn't buy it out there. Don't let them fool you. You don't need to buy it from them. You will get one for free when you buy the ticket and then you go a little further to enter the temple. And if you wear long pants like me, you just get a little belt like this and you don't need to pay for it don't buy us wrong from the people on outside unless of course you want to use it afterwards i'll be honest i don't know that much about this temple so i enlisted the help of a lovely local guide to help explain to me and perhaps to you what this place is all about welcome thank you very much for your coming my name is inyoman sukadana i'm a tourism guide in eleven keep temple this bill almost already thousand years old. It was this built special for the school of meditation. But before go inside the cave, everyone must clean body in Sapta Ganga. But it was in the right side for boy, in the left side for woman. Why this place we are called the Elephant Keep Temple? Because in this place we are Puja Ganesha. Every in the pond, like an enter, we have a guardian. It's a guardian statue, yeah. Okay, now go inside the cave. What can inside? I show you go in. Come here, please. You can see like this niches, it was in this area special for meditation. So yeah. you sit here in here and yeah. meditate? It was here, people can do sit down here. Why out a bit narrow? Because in this temple special for children. And then every day we give Chanang Sari. Uh, we call it uh, Chanang Sari, uh, this offering for the Lord on the shrine. If you see sometime in the prawn house, in the prawn shop like that, there are special for evil spirit. Ampun, mau rangkat ke setran eh? Ampun. Okay, before you're going out from here, I hope God blessing you for health and harmonious and success your career. Thank you very much for your coming. Terima kasih. Terima kasih. Thank you so much. You're welcome. So we met this woman just on the way down there and she said that there was just about to start a little ceremony here. And it's actually, what she said, a cremation ceremony, so funeral. I think I just caught the start of it here. That was pretty fantastic to witness and I'm sure the ceremony continues. But these are the kind of things that you can just stumble upon when you get a bit off the beaten path. So moral of this story, get out there and explore Bali away from the main touristy areas. 
influencers are wrong about Bali and that can sadly influence your trip coming here. So today I'm gonna talk about exactly how and why that is and what you should do to have a fantastic trip to Bali. So influencers are wrong about Bali in a few different ways. And the first is perhaps also the most obvious one that they're kind of over portraying the beauty. And this is not something that's unique to Bali. This happens everywhere. Influencers will take a gorgeous photo, really enhance the colors and pump up the saturation, perhaps remove all other people from the photo in Photoshop, maybe remove all the trash from the beach. And of course it helps if you have a girl in a bikini as well. And I mean, this in itself is not really a bad thing. I mean, people can do whatever they want to do, but I guess the problem arises when you want to plan your trip because these photos are so beautiful. You know, they might get a lot of exposure and a lot of likes on social media. So they're also the ones that you are likely to see when you are doing research on your destination. So when you finally go to these places, you realize that they don't actually look like they do in the photos and perhaps you get a little bit disappointed. Of course, some of the blame is also on you because just don't trust people on social media. And this here is actually a pretty good example. So I've come out to this beautiful black sand beach here, but you won't really often see on social media what it actually looks like. So there's just a lot of trash everywhere. Up here it looks like people, you know, come camping and just watch the sunset, drink some beers and just leave all the trash. And on the beach it's just a lot of washed up debris and also trash. And I'll even show you a picture that I took of my girlfriend Sally on a pretty similar black sand beach where I basically just removed all the trash from the image as it just distracts from the actual image that I want you to see. But if you then decide to go to this beach, there will be a lot of trash. <laughs> and I feel like I can quite confidently talk about this as I have in total traveled around Bali for around a year and at the same time I've also been a bit on the, I guess, the influencer side of things, posting a lot of stuff from Bali and generally just following a lot of people who are also influencers and are traveling in Bali. So another thing that influencers do, and well, to be honest, this is something that I used to do a lot and still do sometimes, is to wake up extremely early for sunrise to get to a location super early because at this time the light is just beautiful so the pictures will just be a little bit nicer looking and at the same time there's almost no other people and like i've had some amazing experiences doing just this going to some beautiful beautiful locations for sunrise and just being completely alone in a very gorgeous spot like right now i'm on my way to a waterfall actually and here there's just a very nice little temple on the way. I'm sure we can already hear the waterfall, which should be just down here. But really, I do this because I enjoy it. I enjoy taking pictures and like I just enjoy the whole process and I don't mind waking up early once in a while. But I mean, if you are here on vacation, you're probably not gonna be waking up at 5 a.m. every day just to be alone at a waterfall. You'll probably go a little bit later during the day or you might go with a tour guide. And I mean, then you'll just be at the waterfall the exact same time as everyone else. And again, this is nothing that's exclusive to Bali, really. Popular tourist destinations all over the world get completely crowded. But the difference, perhaps, is that if you go to these places in Bali and you expect them to be, I guess, at least half empty, then you're in for a bit of surprise. Because if that's what you have seen on social media. Now, I'll be honest, I did not go to this waterfall here for sunrise. Instead, I found one that's not really guess popular or very well known so now it's like 2 p.m. and I am the only one here but then there is also the other side of that because since this is not really a tourist destination you know there's no one collecting money for me to enter it's it's all free here but that also means that there's no one really who takes care of this place so it is full of trash everywhere especially a bit downstream here it's just crazy it's tr really trash everywhere even up in the bamboo trees
And I mean, it's not the most beautiful waterfall I have ever seen here in Bali. But again, the really beautiful ones are often very crowded during the day. So you can have some great experiences coming to these places that are just, well, less known, I guess. And it is pretty cool. It's like a double waterfall. So if we can look past the, all the trash here, it's really not too bad. But this also leads me to the next thing, that traveling Bali has just become an Instagram tour. Like, literally. You go to these websites where you would book tours to explore a country or a city. But in Bali, the top tours with something like four or five thousand reviews are called something along the lines of Bali Instagram tour. I mean, what? People who aren't influencers and who don't make any money doing this fly all the way to Bali only to pay even more money to be driven around in a car all day, stopping at these places to take the exact same photo as everyone else because some famous influencer did it once. And again, people can do what they want, but... I don't think I can attribute this one only to influencers, but people in Bali also tend to stay in the very same small areas. Again, this is probably very similar all around the world in the touristy places. But in Bali, most people tend to stay around Canggu, Kuta, Seminyak. But these places, in my opinion, has just become so westernized that it feels more like Australia or even Europe there. It doesn't really feel like Bali to me. I mean, sure, there are loads of great restaurants and beach clubs and cafes, and they're all very beautiful and Instagrammable, and you can have a lot of fun, and going out is also great, but it's just weird, like, it's so westernized. And in my opinion, it doesn't really have that Bali magic anymore. But because these areas have become so popular with tourists, prices for everything, especially accommodations, have also gone up a lot. And I mean, it makes sense, there's high demand, so the prices go up. And this right here, leads to the next wave of influencers who are wrong. And these I call the negative influencers. In a nutshell, they hated their stay in Bali. They say it's overrated, overcrowded. They were stuck in traffic all day and everything they bought is priced like back home in their Western home country. And they're wrong. But why did they have this experience then? because they followed the first influencers. So these negative influencers spent all their time staying in Changu or Kuta or Seminyak and paid hundreds of dollars to stay in that trendy, popular Airbnb. They went down to the beach and it was full of trash and the water was brown. They only ate at the trendy Instagrammable restaurants and cafes where the food prices is like 10 times the Bali average. And they visited that one popular waterfall right at noon, just the same as everyone else and then complain that there are too many other tourists. But it's not just these negative influencers who have this experience. Regular tourists come here and fall into this exact trap. So what can you do to avoid this? Well, first off, just don't spend all your time in Changu, Seminyak, Kuta or even Ubud. Move around a little bit and go outside of the very touristy places to see more of Bali, basically. And I will have some recommendations for you in just a little bit. Now, I do like to actually stay in Changu for a few days when I arrive from the airport, as it is actually a pretty good area to get settled and maybe be jet lag and just have a good meal, get a SIM card, rent a scooter. It's a pretty good place to, you know, start your trip. But even then, I'd recommend looking at places just outside of like Changu or the other popular areas. For example, right now I'm staying in a place called Sese, which is just a minute drive from Changu, but it's just so much more quiet, loads of rice fields, you don't see tourists like everywhere, it has a lot more of a local feel. Or even in Changu, you could just look a little bit more inland. I mean, a few weeks ago, I stayed in this $15 hotel in Changu, and it was a pretty good deal. Chengu area can also be pretty great if you're staying perhaps longer term, so a few weeks, a few months, or even longer. Because there is just everything you need to have a comfortable stay, good Wi-Fi, loads of restaurants, and a lot of other digital nomad type of people. And I mean, it is a pretty good place to have a kind of a base and you, where you can then go explore from. But also don't go to Chengu and expect incredible beaches. The beaches here are great for surfing. They're great for just chilling out with a beer and watching the sunset. But if you want those beautiful beaches and go swimming in turquoise water, you need to go down to Uluwatu or perhaps even take a boat out to Nusa Lembongang or even the Gili Islands. I do have a huge Bali guide where I go a bit more in depth with each of these locations. But here are some great places you could consider visiting. 
So first off is Ahmed in East Bali. Here you just have great snorkeling and diving and it's very laid back and not full of tourists at all. But it's still a little bit touristy mainly because of the diving that I mentioned. So it is kind of built up and there are some nice hotels and restaurants there. Then there's Sidemen, which is probably one of the most gorgeous areas in Bali. You'll get some incredible views and this will really feel like the proper local countryside in Bali. And you have Munduk and in general the north of Bali. So the villages up in the north, up in the mountains in Bali are just beautiful. And there seems to be an endless amount of waterfalls here. Or you could even go all the way up north to the beach towards like Lovina, where you can find some nice hotels and decent infrastructure, but still very, very untouched by other tourists. And there is Ubud and Ubud is very touristy. But if you stay more on the outskirts of Ubud, you can have a much better experience and really get a local Bali feeling. And do consider subscribing if you want more recommendations of where to go that are just off the beaten path. I'm just about to go on a huge road trip across Bali where I just want to try and experience get some more real and rural and off the beaten path Bali. Okay, so we have covered the accommodation part of Bali, which these influencers who are wrong say is very expensive. The other part is food and it's actually really simple. Eat local food at local restaurants. If you want to save money, skip the foreign restaurants and find a local varung and eat some Indonesian food. It's both fantastic and affordable. I often spend less than $5 per day on food simply by eating mostly local. But if you do want a burger or a smoothie bowl now and again, there are actually quite a few restaurants out there that serve Western food that are also really affordable. One of my favorites is called Kopi Kota. But the food is really great. They have a lot of more Western food, but also some traditional Indonesian food. They have great coffee here and the prices are really great especially for like for western food the prices are amazing not everyone will love bali but if you avoid listening to these influencers who are wrong your chances of falling in love with this island are greatly increased let's talk about prices and the cost of living in bali as we have talked about, if you go online, you'll often hear or read that Bali has gotten so expensive recently. And that is kind of true, at least for some things in some areas. But the reality is that you can really spend as much or as little as you want on your trip to Bali. If you know how, you can really enjoy a luxurious vacation on a relatively low budget. Or you could go all in and spend just thousands of dollars per day here. Or the complete opposite and live more simply and spend barely any money at all. And this is also perhaps where it gets a little bit hard making a video like this. Because as you saw earlier, you can quite easily spend $15 per night or hotel or $150 per night for a villa. You can also spend less and you can also spend a lot more. So what I'm gonna do here is just give some more example of different things, how much they cost and perhaps what you then can expect from it. And of course accommodation is the big one. Now what I have really liked to do here in Bali is to find a more affordable stay and rent for maybe a month at a time and then do like a one or two night trip to a fancier villa or hotel once in a while. That way I've really been able to get the best of both worlds. I've been able to live very affordably but also gotten the experience of some amazing villas and hotels here in Bali. Which in my opinion is also one part of what makes traveling here in Bali a little bit special. For renting a month at a time I've usually spent two to four hundred US dollars per month of course depending on the place. And I've split that cost with my partner so of course it, that is very affordable for us. Now that hasn't been in some amazing insane villas or anything but more like basic homestays or apartments. And the big factor here on keeping I guess the price a little bit down is to not stay in the very popular spots. So we try to always stay a little bit outside the busy areas and that just makes the places way more affordable. Now some places have their monthly discount baked into the price uh, on the booking platforms but oftentimes I just write the place on WhatsApp and ask them if they have some kind of monthly discount and just book with them directly. That way it usually gets quite a bit cheaper as they don't have to pay for the booking fee. Okay, food. Bali has some amazing options for food. Indonesian food is amazing and I would definitely advise you to try as many local dishes as you possibly can. You're really missing out if you don't. But Bali is also home to so many foreign restaurants that are very very good. Pretty much food from any country or any culture you can get it here 
and a lot of it is going to be amazing. So what does it cost? Well, as you have probably guessed, the Indonesian food is going to be very affordable, often costing around one to two dollars per meal. My girlfriend and I will often order takeout using Grab or Gojek, getting two meals, maybe some appetizer or desserts delivered to our door for just around six dollars total. I mean, that's pretty insane. But of course, that's the Indonesian food. If you want to eat the Western food or you want to visit some of those fancy, Instagrammable, beautiful restaurants, it's a bit of a different story. In these places, you can expect to pay around five to $10 per dish. It's also common that these prices don't include tax and service charge. So usually you'll need to add 10 to 20% extra on your bill in the end. In my experience, many of the local restaurants have these charges included in their price. You'll need to get around on the island somehow and Bali is generally not very walkable. You can use the Uber-like services Grab and Gojek, which you can also use for food delivery and pretty much anything you can think of, to either get a car, a taxi or jump on the back of a scooter. The scooter option is obviously more affordable, but I mean both options are, to be honest. Going through my booking history, I can see that I've paid around two to five US dollars for trips that are around 30 minutes. So that gives you an idea of the price range. It is also very common to rent a scooter here in Bali and if you know how to ride one I would definitely recommend it as it is just a fantastic way to get around and explore the island. The price will depend on exactly which model you want and how new or old it is but you could expect to pay around four to maybe ten dollars per day. If you rent longer term it'll get cheaper. I've rented decent scooters for around a hundred US dollars per month. Gas is also very affordable costing just a couple of dollars to completely fill your tank. Many attractions in Bali like waterfalls, temples and beaches will have an entrance fee and usually it will just be a couple of dollars. If you want to do like a tour, so renting a car that will take you to a bunch of different places around the island, it will usually cost something like 30 to maybe $100 per day, depending on exactly what you want to do, but also where you book. So really have a look around because the prices can vary wildly. So if you're really traveling on a budget, you can really stay in Bali for maybe 10 to $30 per day. And in the budget version, you'll mostly be staying in, well, perhaps hostels or like smaller homestays, which are just basically a room with a toilet, nothing fancy, but everything you would need. And you would be eating mostly local food and not doing many of the, I guess, more expensive tours, but doing a lot of the free attractions and cheaper, cheaper activities. If you go more, I guess, mid-range, so aim for, I guess, just a nice, decent hotel and perhaps eat a mix of local food and some Western food, having a few beers here and there, you could probably expect to spend maybe 50 to $100 per day. And if you want the luxury experience of staying in a private villa with a private pool and going to the beach clubs, having fancy food every night, I mean, you can be spending several hundred dollars per day. Welcome to Nusa Lembongang, perhaps the true paradise in Bali. This is so cool. So if you are tired of the crazy traffic and the dirty beaches in Bali, this might be the spot for you. But in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you everything you need to know to visit this small island just off the coast of Bali and all the great places that you just can't miss. So let's explore this little gem in Bali. Ah, so good. Drink too much. This is actually a very nice beach. Nusalembongang is a tiny island that sits just off the coast from Bali and therefore is a part of Bali. It's linked with its sister island Nusa Cheningan via a narrow yellow bridge and it's these two islands that we'll explore today. There is a third island right next door, the largest and probably the most famous of the three, called Nusa Penina, which is definitely also worth a visit. 
Getting to Nusa Limbongang from Bali takes only 30 minutes with a boat. The price will vary depending on where you buy your ticket, but I always use 12go.asia and here it cost me 145,000 rupiah for a one-way ticket. You can also get a public ferry, which costs even less, but the journey will take about 90 minutes instead. Most boats will leave from the Sanur harbor, which is almost brand new and very comfortable. But as Nusa Limbongang doesn't really have a dock, you will most likely be disembarking on the beach, so be aware of that. Once you arrive on the island, you can walk to your hotel, rent a bike, or jump in one of these pickup truck taxis. The guys here selling the taxi trips drop some insane prices on us at first, so be sure to haggle or perhaps ask your hotel to organize pickup, or at least what you should be expecting to pay for the trip. Just check in to our beautiful hotel where we actually have like our own private villa with our own pool. But I will show you that a little bit later. Now I just went out alone on a little walkabout here in the area just to explore the area where we're staying and perhaps go down to the beach and see what I can see. My first impressions are actually really nice. Seems really chill, a lot of nature everywhere. And to be honest, it also seems just really, really quiet and not very busy at all. I mean, I guess we are kind of in the off season. This is like middle December and it does probably get very busy towards like the holidays. It's one of the busiest time, at least in Bali. But it's really like a big contrast if you're coming from some of the busier parts in Bali and then you come out here and it's just really empty and relaxed. This is Dream Beach, supposedly one of the nicest beaches on the island. So not a bad place to start our trip. And it's easy to see why this place is popular. It has the perfect sand and the beautiful colors of the water. I think I understand the name they gave this beach. That was actually a surprisingly nice beach, very beautiful. And I mean, how can it be so empty there? I guess the only thing, it was a little bit too rough, the water to go swimming in, at least right now at this hour. But the next spot I want to head to is should be just around the corner here. And it's also supposedly very cool. Hello, Hi. How are you? Not so good. Not so good? I think. <laughs> Drink too much? So, <laughs> you want to go into the build here? Yes, 25. Okay. Yes. Okay, no problem. Where are you from? From Denmark. Denmark. You from here? Yes. Oh, nice. Local. Local. Okay, okay, yeah, they're coming back every day with seven. Okay, perfect. Okay. Good day, yeah. Thank you so much. Just next door to Dream Beach is one of the biggest attractions on this island, Devil's Tear. It's a pretty gorgeous spot where you can really feel nature's power as the waves crash into the rocks and makes this huge splash. That's really cool. I had no idea these were here, these like natural pools. It just looks really, really incredible with the huge Mount Agung volcano in the background. And Mount Agung is the largest volcano on Bali. So that's what we can see here in the background. Honestly, I'm not quite sure how I can be at this place all by myself. I mean, there's no one here. So I made it back to our hotel now and I thought I'd just show you around this very nice villa that we are staying in here. So this place is called Sunset Garden and it's actually more like a hotel or resort but we have our own very large private villa right here. So let's have a look. This whole outdoor space is just amazing. There's really just something about having your own private pool. I love how the whole villa is surrounded by these big walls with just loads of plants and flowers everywhere. It gives it a very nice tropical vibe. But up here on the deck, we just have a nice little seating area over here. And on this other side here, we even have a little outdoor kitchen area here. But it's not really like we have used it anyway. So let's just check out one of the rooms here. 
it's actually a pretty spacious room here. We got a very big, very nice bed, kind of little desk and storage area over on this side. And then of course we got the bathroom out there in the back. So if you've ever tried having an outdoor bathroom before, you'll know that it's really nice. It's such a good feeling just to shower in the open. But I guess the downside, at least for some people, is that there's a tendency to be a few more bucks. I think we paid just about $150 per night for this place. Now, mind you, we did book it here over the Christmas period, so perhaps it was a bit more expensive. So if you were kind of booking a bit more out of season, it's probably a bit cheaper than that, actually. But let's continue exploring the island. absolute best way you can get around the island is with a scooter. So I rented this scooter just through my hotel and it cost me a hundred thousand rupiah per day. And I guess if you shop around you could probably get a little bit of a better price. But it's probably around 60 to 100 thousand per day for a scooter. Of course if you don't know how to drive a scooter it might not be the best place to start learning as the roads are not like perfect. But on the flip side there's almost no traffic here and the roads are beautiful to drive so it's just a joy driving around here. This little beach here is called Le Boa Beach and it's really a bit of a hidden gem and you can't really find any information about this beach online or even on Google Maps. But it's just really beautiful, very clear water and some very nice white sand here. The water is such a nice temperature and I mean I am all alone right now at this beautiful beautiful beach. Like there were a couple of people just before, a little family, but they just left so now I have this whole beach all to myself. Can't really complain about that. But Nusa Limbongang is more than just beautiful beaches. Although we will visit a few more, I promise. The north side of the island is actually a mangrove forest. And a great thing to do here is to take a little tour through the mangrove. We got on a little boat and got sailed around. You can also get a paddleboard or a kayak and sail around for yourself. It's a very chill activity. The tour takes probably around 30 minutes and there's not really a lot of action. But I had never really been in a mangrove before, so it was cool to see. After the mangrove tour, we went to one of the many beach clubs on the island. This one, called Sandy Bay Beach Club, was very close to our hotel, so it was an easy choice. And this beach club is really beautiful and it also sits right on a very gorgeous beach and has some pretty great views. The food was great, drinks were great, but I mean as with most beach clubs on this island and on Bali in general, it's kind of expensive. But we stayed to enjoy the sunset from here, so it was money well spent. Perhaps the thing I have been the most excited about here on Nusa Limbongang. We're about to go on a pretty special snorkeling trip. Now supposedly there are some very nice snorkeling spots around the islands here. But besides that there is a very famous spot where you can see and swim with huge manta rays. But unfortunately I just learned that right now is perhaps the worst time of the year to actually come and see the manta rays as they just might not be in this spot where they're usually at. But hopefully we can still get lucky and spot some. Hello. Morning, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, yeah. Where are you from? From Denmark. Denmark, yeah. Uh, what's your name? Nyoman. I'm Adam. Is this your boat? Yes. Okay. <laughs> nice. And we started out great, spotting a group of dolphins right away, which of course I didn't film, and just getting some beautiful views from the boat. There are some great snorkeling spots around here, full of marine life and some pretty great corals. You can see a bunch of different tropical fish, dolphins and even turtles. And the water is pretty clear, but the conditions can of course vary depending on the season, the weather and so on. But unfortunately, today we had no luck in spotting any manta rays. We've now come down to Jungut Batu Beach. This is actually a very nice beach 
and compared to some of the other ones we visited, this one is pretty good for swimming as the waters are pretty calm as we're like in between Bali now. So on the other side of the water there is Bali. So you also get some just some great views here from the beach. And I guess it's also this part of the island where there's just a lot of hotels and a lot more going on, shops. So it's definitely worth coming out to Yungut Batu Beach and check this out. And then there's this huge crane out there in the water. From what I can understand, it's like a crane barge that got stuck on the reef. So now it's just there. And we just went into this place called Ohana's to have some lunch and just chill for a little bit in the shade. It's a beautiful place, really beautiful design. Food is good, drinks are good. It's a little bit pricey though. After having a few drinks at the beach club, we decided to have a few more. And why not have them in a pretty unique spot, a floating bar. It's called the pontoon. So the way that you get out there is that you actually just go down to the bar they have on shore and tell the person in the bar that you wish to go out to the pontoon. And then they'll come pick you up in their little dinghy. And the boat ride is free, but when you get out there, there is a minimum spend, I believe, of 200,000 rupiah per person. Which, to be fair, you'll probably have spent after like two drinks or two beers, as the prices are pretty steep. But I mean, it's probably worth it. You are paying a premium for the location. We ended up chilling here for several hours, meeting cool people, jumping in the water like a hundred times and ultimately enjoying the sunset. This spot was really awesome. Another fantastic thing to do is to get on your scooter and do a little road trip of the island. And perhaps of the sister island, Nusa Cheningan as well. So let's drive around and check out some great spots along the way. So come up now, I guess, to a bit of the other side of the island. I'm now actually in between the two islands. So that right there is Nusa Cheningan and here I am on Nusa Limbongang. The reason for that is I want to check out all of this that's going on behind me. So this is a lot of seaweed farms they have here, which is actually something I've never seen before. And from my understanding, before tourism really took off here on the islands, this is one way they made a living out here. But then as tourism started to grow, they kind of slowly abandoned it as they make a lot more money through tourism. Then a certain pandemic hit and most of the locals here went back to seaweed farming. So a lot of the seaweed farms came sprawling back up again. But now here we are almost 2024 and tourism is slowly coming back to normal. And now the locals are again getting jobs in tourism where they make more money. So they are slowly actually abandoning the seaweed farming again. But now we're gonna go check out the yellow bridge that connects the two small islands here. And then we're probably gonna cross the bridge and explore Nusa Seningang as well. The bridge is really narrow, but two scooters can just pass each other, but it feels a bit like a near miss every time. You can also walk across, of course. We then stopped at Le Pirate for lunch, another gorgeous spot to stay at or just to hang out. We've stayed with them before on the Gili Islands and really loved it. And their spot here on Nusa Cheningang is really beautiful and the food is great. This here is Blue Lagoon on Nusa Cheningang. And it's definitely one of the spots that you gotta come see on this island. The water here, as the name suggests, is just so blue. And it just looks really beautiful up from this cliff viewpoint you got up here. And you just watch the waves crash against the rock side. Now it does look a bit sketchy because you can just walk straight up to the edge here. I did see some girls like who were like just barely hanging with their legs over the edge just to get that very cool Instagram photo. So please be careful. There's one more spot I just want to check out right here next to Blue Lagoon. Or I mean, it's I guess it's more like overlooking Blue Lagoon. It's called Cliff. And check out these views right here. The 
there's another beautiful, beautiful beach right down here behind me called Secret Point Beach. But right now it's actually high tide, so there's practically no beach left down there. But the views you get from up here are really beautiful and the beach looks so nice. There's like some Bali swings and everything. All right, I think I found the stairs to actually get down there. So even though the tide is super high, I think we're gonna go down and just see how it looks. This next spot is perhaps a bit more for the adventurous types out there, as the road here is pretty bad. So you gotta be a little bit skilled at driving a scooter. But once you get there, you just have to take this short walk that we're on here. I think you can already see that, see that super crystal clear blue water down there. So that's where we're going. Hi, how are you? Hi. So this beach here has the very creative name a secret beach. Not to be confused with the secret point beach, which we just visited. But this one is pretty close to both the Blue Lagoon and the secret point beach. As with some of the other beaches around here, it's not really great for swimming as the waves are just too strong. But it looks like there's actually some old buildings over there. So let's go and see what that's all about. like some kind of abandoned resort right here on the beach. Let's try and explore a little bit and see what we can find. Okay, so this is like the bar area. Oh, it's really dark and dirty here. Okay, so there's actually some dates here. 2020, it looks like it says. So they probably only shut down when COVID happened. So it's only been like three or four years, it seems. It's really crazy like how fast these things like deteriorate and nature just starts taking over again. All right, let's head up the stairs and see if we maybe can find some rooms or what else we got going on up here. This looks like it could be the restaurant. And I mean, you can just imagine having your breakfast here with this view. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful walk through nature on these paths. And we're definitely coming up to the rooms now. Pretty cool though, they're all the same cabin though. Yeah. No, this Are any of them open? All. Did you? all oh, really? Yeah, they're all open. Oh, cool. Oh, nice. Cheers, guys. Yeah, you too. Oh, yeah, they weren't kidding. This one's open. Hey, let's check it out. The mini fridge at the kettle. Got some nice coffee here. When the windows were clean, I bet this place had a great view. Oh, nice. It's like the bathroom is like on this other side of this little bridge here. I mean, it looks like pretty modern. I mean, this is so cool. I had no idea this was actually here. I just came for the beach and, and we got an abandoned resort. I think that's a win. Yeah, and then they just have some more cabins up here. Same design. It's a really unique one, actually. Well, I guess I wasn't kidding when I said that this place was a bit more for the adventurous types. Both the beach and this hidden resort, so. Oh, shit. Wow. But please wear shoes when you come here. Jesus Christ. I'll try to find some more information about this place when I get back. See if I, if I can't find the name or perhaps, perhaps some old pictures or something. Like what it used to look like when it was open. 
editor Adam here. Now, if you were very sharp in that little clip with the whiteboard, perhaps you saw that the name of the resort was actually up there in the corner. And using that name, I was able to find the resort's Instagram account. And on their Instagram, they haven't really posted anything since 2016. But we can see that guests who have been there have tagged them in their photos as late as 2020. So I think that my theory of them closing in 2020 due to the pandemic is probably spot on. And I also managed to find the resort on TripAdvisor where you can still see all the photos of how the hotel looked like in its prime. Okay, now back to the video. But how long should you actually stay here in Nusa Limbongang? Well, that's a pretty good question. I've now stayed here a bit more than a week and that has been plenty of time to see everything I wanted to see while also having some days of just doing absolutely nothing. So if you wanna have some good time to chill and just relax by the pool and by the beach, yeah, you can easily spend a week here. And if you're a bit more on a time crunch, I would say two or three nights here would be perfect for a lot of people, especially if you want to see other places around here, around Bali. Right now we are actually in Ahmed, which is in the east of Bali. So we drove here on a scooter that we rented and it took almost like four hours driving from Changu where we were staying before, but that included a lot of small breaks along the way. If you don't fancy a scooter road trip yourself, then you could hire a car to take you here. That will probably take around three hours and I'll try to find the average price it would cost and put it right here on the screen. Now, Ahmed is actually one of my favorite areas here in Bali, because compared to some of the other popular areas in Bali, like Kuta, Changu, Seminyak, Ahmed is really quiet and not over-touristed. But it is still touristy enough that there are a lot of nice hotels like this one. There's a lot of restaurants. So it's like a good mix of not overly touristed, but touristed enough that things are kind of built up for it. But what Ahmed is perhaps most famous for and why most of the tourists come here is for its diving, snorkeling and just the overall amazing marine life out here. There's also a couple of really cool wrecks nearby that you can swim with and both of them are like quite shallow enough that if you can't dive down you can easily see a lot of marine life just by snorkeling at the top. That also means that there are a lot of diving places here. You can easily get certified scuba diving, free diving, whatever you want. And the prices here are supposed to be very competitive. Pretty much wherever you stay in Ahmed, you're going to be very close to the beach. And we just have to go down here, down the stairs, and then we're in the water. Let's go. This is Lipa Beach, beautiful black volcanic sand beach. And along the beach, there are a lot of restaurants and little bars. It's a great place to enjoy a little beer or a snack after you've been out in the water. And the water here is just so clear. The visibility is fantastic and the marine life is actually amazing here. And it's just swimming out a few meters from the beach. All kind of different colorful tropical fish. And if you're lucky, you can spot a turtle here. When you swim a little further out and it gets a bit deeper, there can be a bit of a current here, so be aware of that. But when you're staying more towards the shallow water, the current is usually not as strong. And it's even in the more shallow waters that a lot of the corals and marine life are. So we just spent like two hours out there snorkeling by this beautiful, beautiful Lipa beach. I can really recommend it if you're into snorkeling, scuba diving, free diving but swimming around out there for a few hours also got us extremely hungry. But luckily, as I mentioned earlier, there's tons of great restaurants around here. So let's head out and see if, if we can't find one.
We actually came out to, I think this might be our favorite little cafe restaurant here in Ahmed. It's called Kopi Kota Ahmed. They have a few different locations around Bali. It's just a little bit away from the main beach, so it's really best to come here if you have a scooter. But the food is really great. They have a lot of more Western food, but also some traditional Indonesian food. They have great coffee here and the prices are really great, especially for like for Western food, the prices are amazing. And if you do stay a few days here in Ahmed, there's actually a lot of other things you can do around Ahmed besides just snorkeling and diving. There's a lot of cool spots that are actually quite close by. And if you're the type of person who likes to get up for sunrise, there's this beautiful spot up in the mountains called Lahangang Suite, where we went for sunrise last year. There's also this beautiful spot called Bukit Sinta. And this is basically just on the side of a road, but it's just a really beautiful view and a good place to take a little photo while you're driving around the rice fields. You also have a lot of temples very close by. Ahmed is actually a really great place to explore from. There's another fact that makes me like Ahmed, that from here you can easily take the boat to visit the Gili Islands. And taking the boat from here is just a lot better than from Padang Bay, which is probably where people usually take the boat from. But from Padang Bay, the trip is like three hours or something. And the waters are actually really rough, so it can feel like a really long trip and a lot of people get seasick. But if you take the boat here from Ahmed, the trip is a lot shorter and just way more comfortable. And if you are going to visit Bali, I always recommend that you visit the Gili Islands. If you want that island vibe, nice beaches, beautiful water and perhaps swim with some turtles. very popular activity here in Ahmed is to go and watch the sunset. There's like a particular point a little further up the road where you just get great sunset views. But I mean, since we got this whole area to ourselves, I think we're gonna try to watch the sunset from here. I also can't avoid talking about the Gili Islands. This might be the real paradise here. I ended up going back to these islands three times. I just couldn't stay away. So the Gili Islands are three small islands off the coast of Lombok, which in itself also could be worth visiting. The beaches are incredible. The water is crystal clear and motorized vehicles are not allowed. So you walk or ride a bicycle to get around. It's just that perfect laid back beach island vibe. It's also incredible for diving and snorkeling. You can literally walk off the beach and go swim with sea turtles. Kili Travangang is the bigger and more developed island with the most people, most things going on and more partying. Kili Meno on the other hand is the smallest and has probably the least going on. So it also has a very laid back vibe. And then you have Gili Air, which sits somewhere in between the two. I would recommend spending at least two to three nights here so you can enjoy it. And as you also do spend a bit of time on the transportation getting to and from the islands. A pro tip is to take the boat from Ahmed to the Gili Islands, as you can then cut down that transportation time quite a lot. And you could then combine it with a great stay in Ahmed. Nice to meet you. Nanga. Nanga. Thank you. This has really got to be one of the prettiest and nicest roads I have ever driven. Good morning from Bali, an island that is extremely popular with tourists but these tourists all tend to go to the exact same places. So there are actually still a bunch of hidden gems on this island and today we'll explore one of them. So I'm close to a village called Bangli and I guess you would describe this as central Bali, but it's really not just this particular village that's the hidden gem, it's just this whole area in general. And the too long didn't read for why this area is amazing is there are a ton of great things to see and do. The nature is amazing. You're usually in the middle of a local village and there are 
barely any other tourists. Another bonus for getting off the beaten path is that you can find some amazing hotels and Airbnbs for very affordable prices. But we'll have a look around this one a little bit later because now we're going to go check out some waterfalls as apparently there's like just a bunch of them within a few minutes of this place. Hello, how are you? All right, thank you so much. So Sally came along with us to this waterfall, which is called Goa Rajo, I think. And it was really just a one minute drive away from uh, where we're staying. So we paid 25,000 per person to get in here. And now we are just, well, walking through the jungle to get down to the waterfall. Already some pretty great views here. The first rule when visiting a waterfall here in Bali is that if you want to be there relatively alone, go as early as possible. We didn't quite do that. It's like 11 a.m. or something. And I think this waterfall is pretty popular. So I guess we'll see how busy it is. Right, a little temple here next to the waterfall, which I think is very normal here. A lot of the waterfalls here in Bali are kind of, I guess, sacred or holy or spiritual. So there are temples at a lot of these waterfalls. And we even found the first one here. I think we are reaching the waterfall. I can see a bunch of people up there at least. It's a really short and very easy hike actually, but very beautiful through this whole valley here next to the river. There's this waterfall out here and they made a little man-made little pool where you can go for a dip right here. But there's also a waterfall inside the cave right here, which and that one looks actually a bit more amazing. So that's where we're going. Yeah, this is actually a pretty cool place, like with two waterfalls. I mean, the one in the cave is definitely the nicer one. And to be honest, it's not actually too busy, even at this hour. So I expected a lot worse, so. Big recommendation to come and check out Goa Raja waterfall. But then now there should be another waterfall very close by. So let's go check that one out. We're on the way to the next waterfall. And this one is called Ye Bulan waterfall. And it was just a two minute drive away from the other one. But I think this one is a lot less known, I guess. Doesn't really have a lot of reviews or anything on Google Maps. So. And I didn't really see any motorbikes parked out here, so we'll see if there's even any other people around. Well, my pocket here. 20,000. Thank you. 20,000 per person to get to this waterfall. I mean, of course, you're paying for the upkeep of these waterfalls and so that they're kept clean. The other day I visited just this very kind of hidden little waterfall that didn't have like an entrance fee and no one really taking care of it. So there was also just trash everywhere. Here's another little cute temple next to the waterfall and a lot of fish. This is a pretty cool little bamboo bridge they've built going inside this little canyon here. Here the bridge just ends. Morning. How are you? My name. My name Wayan Sewan. Wayan. Sewan. Wayan Sewan. My name is Adam. Adam. Nice to meet you. Hello. My name Hello. is Sally. You take care of the waterfall. Beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> Can you hold up from Museum Yebulan Waterfall? Come to Yebulan Waterfall. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Of course. <laughs> One is actually pretty cool. 
And there's just more. Another huge one back here. Really cool. Beautiful. How do, how do you say jackfruit in Bahasa? Bahasa... This? Nangka. Nangka. Jackfruit. Good. How did you like Yebulan waterfall? Very good. Very good. Yeah, and I mean, we were the only one here and the guys working here were so happy that we came. And yeah, you heard him? have to promote Yebulan waterfall, so please come here if you go to Bali. It is a bit of a hidden gem, and it is really cool, kind of nestled in between the cliffs, I guess, in a canyon, I guess you would call it. Definitely worth checking out, and now we are ready for some lunch. So let's find a nice little place to eat. We found this little restaurant, I guess, down the end of an alleyway here, just off the main road. actually really really good food we got two fried rice two coffees a whole coconut and some french fries and we paid i think it was 200,000 for all of that delicious food that's a pretty good deal in my book but now let's head back to where we're staying and have a tour around our gorgeous little villa and we're back in the villa and before i start exploring a bit more of the area i thought i'd just quickly show you how far your money actually goes when you go a little bit off the beaten path here so let's just have a very quick tour of this place i mean the first thing you really notice is this huge bathtub in the middle of the jungle here which is pretty awesome then we have a very nice little outdoor kitchen desk space over here sally's so just started doing some work and besides that, the outdoor space is just fantastic. Just loads of tropical plants everywhere. And we have a beautiful view kind of overlooking the valley out here. It's really gorgeous. And the little gazebo where we were this morning. And then of course, here we have the villa. And it's actually pretty spacious. It's very messy though, so I do apologize. But yeah, nice kitchen very comfortable bed i mean loads of just chairs and tables everywhere and out here also a pretty spacious bathroom but yeah it's definitely the outdoor space that really sells it for me it really feels like we're in the middle of the jungle this place is kind of located in the middle of the village so it is a very local feel i think the place is also called the local so maybe that's why but we paid just 35 US dollars per night. And I think for, for this huge villa here, it's a very good deal. But there's more to this area than just the waterfall. So now I'm just gonna change out of my wet clothes and then I'm gonna take the scooter and drive around to some other villages nearby and just explore a little bit more of the area. Probably even the best thing to do around here is just to drive around. The roads we're gonna go to, and I mean, even already, are just beautiful. You're driving through just lush forests and rice paddies and local villages, loads of temples around and cute puppies. We're gonna head towards a place called Sidemen Village. It's really one of my favorite places here in Bali and in this area. And there's a particular spot that has some beautiful rice fields and I think we're gonna see if we can't go down and walk in between them. You really often hear this about how the traffic is really horrible in Bali. And that is very true in some parts, especially in the very touristy areas and in Denpasar, the capital city here in Bali. Traffic can be really, really bad. But once you get out a bit more in the rural areas, traffic isn't really a problem. 
and you get to see a lot of things you probably otherwise wouldn't have. Look at this road here. Come on. This is exactly what I was looking for when going out on this trip. I wish I had time to stop at all these places, but we have a couple of hours before the sun goes down and there's a lot of things I want to see before that. Okay. But, just as I said that, let's just turn around here real quick. I saw something just really beautiful here. Just gonna park the bike real quick. Oh, this is beautiful. It's like these temples and lined with these tall decoration things. I, oh, I can't remember the name of them. I think we're coming up on it now. Rice terraces. Should be right here, I think. Good evening. Hello. Good evening. How are you? Fine. Do you want trekking? Yes, please. Yes. Just pay the ticket. 25. 25. No problem, my friend. Thank you. Yeah. How long does it take to One walk hour, or? One hour. Yes. Yeah. You can just follow the sign. We have sign already inside. If you want to explore the rice terrace, just uh -huh. go down following the sign. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Just this way? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, okay, let's go. Let's start trekking some, through some rice terraces here. It costs 25k and they have like apparently set up a lot of roads going through the rice terraces and some signs showing you where to go so you don't get lost. But I mean, how beautiful is this for a little afternoon trek? Actually, this hotel you can see right over here in the background. I'll show you a bit more on the, on the drone so you can see what it looks like. But that's actually one of the, probably the best hotels here in Bali. And a little bit by coincidence, we managed to book ourselves a little villa there. So we're going to spend the night in that hotel tomorrow. So make sure to subscribe if you want to see how one of the best hotels in Bali actually looks like and what that experience is like, because that will be the next video that you'll see. All right, now we're heading down into the rice fields. <laughs> Feels a little bit weird, to be honest, just kind of walking around, chilling, and really enjoying all of this, while these people are just working really, really hard. I mean, I imagine this must be a very, very tough job. But they have like these signs all the way through, so you can't really get lost. It's pretty easy to, to figure out which way to go. But yeah, absolutely beautiful trek through the rice terraces. I can really recommend it, especially since it's like not a very touristy place. So it's a really cool experience coming out here and seeing this. How about that? <laughs> but yeah, this is everything I wanted from this little road trip. Just riding through roads and places like this and through all the local villages. I just made this last little stop here. I mean, again, with a crazy view of the rice terraces here behind me. And I think this is where we're gonna end today's video really check out this whole area if you want to go a bit off the beaten path here in Bali but also consider subscribing if you want to see the next video which is gonna be that hotel I showed you where we're gonna stay tomorrow in probably one of the best hotels here in Bali welcome to what in my opinion might be the best hotel in all of Bali 
So this resort is called Wabadi Ume Sideman. It is located in one of the most beautiful areas of Bali and the resort itself is stunning. And besides that, it's actually quite affordable. So let's check it out. Good morning. So we're just about to go jump on the scooter and head towards Sidemen, where the hotel is located. And it should be around a 40 minute drive to get there. But I also just wanted to appreciate how great the weather is today. It's just blue skies, completely sunny. I mean, we are in the middle of rainy season here in Bali. But to be honest, in the past month, it has barely rained at all. So I guess that's just a little heads up. If you're too scared to go to Bali in rainy season because of, well, how it sounds, don't be. Usually it rains for like an hour in the afternoon or something. And the rest of the time the weather is pretty good. But let's get going. Hello. Thank you, how are you? Hey. Great, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Yeah, so this is just the lobby here. I mean, come on, what have you? Welcome, Bree. Oh, yes. Thank you so much. Um, we call ginger cooler. Ginger cooler. Yeah, it's made from fresh ginger with some soda and lime. Thank you. And the straw is from the papaya trunk. Oh, yeah. cool. <laughs> Please enjoy. Thanks so much. The straw is really cool. What was it, papaya? Yeah, the papaya stem. The papaya stem. That's pretty smart. So we arrived a couple of hours before we can actually check in to our villa, but I mean, we did have to check out of the other place we were staying at. So uh, hopefully we can just go to the restaurant and have a great lunch. You don't mind, before I will escort you to the restaurant, we have the welcome blessing in here. This is the holy water from the temple. As we believe, the real stay will be get less. Can I do it? Yes. Yeah. Yes. This is the splash water into your head. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. God bless you. Excuse me. God bless you. <laughs> Thank you. And also here we have Tridatu bracelet. Mm -hmm. This is the symbolis of the Trinity. This is the in the right hand place because we believe like a good spirit will be in the right hand. This is the symbol of three main gods, Brahma, Vishnu, and Siwa. It's like for creator, protector, and destroyer. With three different colors also, yeah? Red, black, and white. Brahma, Vishnu, and Siwa. God bless you. Terima kasih. Thank you. I will escort you to the restaurant. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. See you. <laughs> this restaurant, such a beautiful bamboo design. And I mean, the view is pretty spectacular. The staff here are just super friendly. Probably some of the like friendliest and best service we've experienced so far. So we have these two beautiful pools down here in like two different levels. Down below, there's a river that kind of wraps around the property here. And then of course we're also just surrounded by the rice terraces. Food has arrived and it looks delicious. I got some yellow curry. I think Sally's is looking even more delicious. What is it? Like tuna? Tuna bowl. Tu yeah, tuna bowl. Oh, wow, it's beautiful. <laughs> Check this out. Oh, this is the view that greets you when you enter this villa. And here's Sally. Hi, Sally. <laughs> I think someone likes this, <laughs> this place. <laughs> Your own pretty huge private pool here and just the most amazing views overlooking the rice fields and the valley with mountains in the background. I have a large sunbed and then the pool just wraps all around the room itself, which is in here. So let's head inside first. 
and it's also a very beautiful room and this bed is huge and i've already tested it and it is so comfortable and on the side you just have a little sofa nook and just behind the bed here we just have a little desk area with the coffee and the water and everything and the big mirror and out here we have a very very large bathroom i really like this shower here it's kind of outdoor but it's most of it is covered with this glass ceiling it's just really really beautiful and very large but then on the other side it gets even better with this very very large bathtub here but out here on the terrace this is really the perfect space we have out here just some chairs and a table We've got complete privacy and just most stunning views but one of the reasons why i actually think that this might be the best hotel in all of bali is when you look at others of these really really fancy hotels many of them cost like 10 times the amount that this hotel costs like you can easily spend a thousand dollars or more per night in many of those like super fancy hotels and honestly i'm not sure like what else they can be doing better than this place like the service is top notch everyone is super friendly the property is absolutely stunning and the room is perfect so just the value for money you get here is to me at least also one of the reasons why this is probably the best hotel in bali so we paid just under 200 us dollars per night here i think to have this incredible pool villa now they do also have some more budget rooms which may cost like a hundred us dollars per night and it's very similar to well the room we have here so it but it's just a room with a balcony and then you're just missing the outside area here but of course you still have access to just all of the beautiful resort but to put it perhaps in perspective so i live in copenhagen and if you want to stay in like a nice like basic hotel room you can easily pay 200 dollars which is what we're paying to stay in this villa here so sally has to take a little work call now so why don't we head out and explore a bit more of the property here and this might be the yoga pavilion we're coming up to here let's just have a look oh they have yoga classes i think every morning at 8 a.m if that's something for you but i mean what a beautiful building and I think right underneath the yoga pavilion should be the spa area. Yeah, it's right here. I'm back here, a little temple. I think you can get some really great massages in there. And then after you get your massage, then they have like a big flower bath hot tub for you with just the most incredible views. We haven't done that yet, but maybe we will. <laughs> Hello, how are you? Which way is it to the river? Down here? Ah, great. Thanks so much. Thank you. So I want to try and get down to the river that was down there, just to see what it looks like. Maybe go for a swim here. I think the receptionist told us they have cooking classes down here as well. Oh, this is so nice. Really beautiful. Got a little private river almost. And right back here, behind the river, is the cinnamon rice terraces. And that's really just another thing that makes this hotel even better, is the location here in Cinnamon, which is probably one of my favorite areas in all of Bali. It's just so beautiful. And the nature here is amazing. And you can actually go for like a walk through the rice terraces in here. In, and that's what I did yesterday. So you can watch my last video where, where I actually explore a lot of the area around the resort here. Just why I think this whole area in general is such a hidden gem here in Bali. And I mean, if you can, then staying in this resort, it's not a bad option. We only really have the budget to stay here the one night though. <laughs> And of course, we have to talk about these pools. They have just the most beautiful design and you get an incredible view from here. So there's the upper level pool, which is probably the main pool. And then down below you have a smaller pool. And uh, in here below the main pool is a little gym if you want to work out a bit. From the restaurant there's this beautiful staircase leading up to the rooftop where they serve the afternoon tea. 
and somehow from up here you get an even better view. I want to show you 30 amazing places in Bali that you just can't miss. Let's just get right into it. There's no particular order to any of these places and I'm only sharing places that I actually visited myself and therefore can recommend. There's obviously a lot more very nice places in Bali just beyond this list. First up is Green Bowl Beach. One of the many very nice beaches uh, down in Uluwatu. This one has, is really unique because of, well, it's bowl shape. It's not that big and it's a bit of a hike down to get to it. When you get down there, it's really beautiful, but be aware that there can be monkeys trying to, to steal some of your stuff if you're not careful. It's also very popular with surfers. Next, we got the area of Sidiman. Sidiman is just an area towards the east in Bali, but it just has a very beautiful kind of I guess real Bali feel to it, like not overly touristed at all. It's just beautiful rice terraces everywhere and mainly a small local villages. A beautiful area just to even just to drive through or to stay at one of the beautiful resorts or hotels there. Even further to the east by the coast, there is a wreck, I think it's called Liberty, US Liberty, but a big shipwreck that you can literally just snorkel off the coast and dive down to it. I think the top part of it is just about five, seven meters below, and then it kind of slopes downwards. You can go diving there, or if you're a good freediver, you can also pretty much explore a lot of the ship. Then we got TT Beach Club, one of the countless beach clubs in Bali. And again, this one is just on the list because I actually went there. I think it's a bit new, so it's really modern and beautiful. It's quite expensive, as I think most of the beach clubs in Bali are, but it sits on probably one of the most beautiful beaches in Bali. Palangang Beach is another very beautiful beach down in Uluwatu. The beach itself is awesome and there's also this great viewpoint just next to the beach that's very popular with tourists and locals alike to go and watch the sunset. Tegenungang Waterfall. I mean it's Bali, there's bound to be a couple waterfalls on this list. So this one is the first one that I visited. It's also I guess one of the easier to reach. It's kind of the closest to many of the more touristy areas and it also has very I guess developed infrastructure that can also mean that it can get very crowded here because it's very easy to get there but definitely to visit in the morning if you want to have it a bit more for yourself another waterfall Leke Leke waterfall yeah this one is just really cool I guess the Im images and videos can speak for themselves here got Pererenan beach, I hope I pronounced that somewhat correctly, but I could basically say all of the beaches or well the same beach that kind of runs through Chengu, Semenya, Kuta. It's not a nice beach per se, it's like black sand and it can get a bit dirty, the water is not the nicest, but it's very lively because I mean this is where a lot of the tourists are staying, so there's a lot going on. It's awesome to go there for sunset to grab a beer and just people watch, play football, play with the dogs, it's a good vibe. Okay next we got Nusa Penida which is not actually in Bali, but a small island very close to Bali. But I include it because if you're going to Bali, you should definitely think about visiting Nusa Penida. It's very easy to do a day trip here, but if you have the time, I would definitely recommend to stay at least a night or two there to really get a nice experience in Nusa Penida. Nungalan Beach is another very cool beach down in Uluwatu. Milo by Nuuk, a pretty cool restaurant. Again, there's countless of amazing restaurants in Bali but I really like this one it has a beautiful vibe and the food is great it's a bit expensive though Tegalagang rice terraces so this is probably the tourist spot to well go see rice terraces and it's like very close to Ubud and I guess for good reason it's very very beautiful can feel a, a bit touristy and you can definitely visit other places with rice terraces that are not touristy at all but it's definitely worth checking Tagalagang rice terraces out okay next one I guess is not a particular spot if you can ride a scooter and rent a scooter just riding around the streets outside of Ubud just get a little bit into the countryside and just drive around Around. It's just an amazing experience. Then we got La Brisa, another very famous, I guess it's a beach club, but it's very chill during the day, have good lunch, and just a very nice place to, to chill with your family or friends. And then they also throw some pretty good parties if you're into that. 
got Kind, another restaurant which is pretty cool. This one is in Seminyak. I think it's all vegan. And I had my first fully vegan pizza there, I think. Really cool place. Padang Padang Beach, another one for your amazing beaches list. Then we got Lahangang Suite. So this is in East Bali. And from what I know, it's basically just some people from the local village that kind of built some infrastructure and some viewing platforms and platforms to take photos up on the top of this mountain because the views are just amazing. And then you pay a little bit to get in and enjoy the views and take some cool pictures. We went here for sunrise and we had it all to ourselves. It was pretty amazing, but we also got really lucky with the weather as it can often be very clouded up in the mountains. Next is Virgin Beach, beautiful white sand beach. That's also more to towards the east of Bali and I guess away from a lot of the touristy areas. So if you want a nice beach, but not have it overly touristed, this one is for you. Bukit Sinta. So this is just some random place by the side of the road that I guess some people found and took some pictures and made it kind of a popular spot on social media. Next up is Gretek. And in particular, the beaches here are really cool. They're like very black stone beaches with palm trees right next to it. Just a really cool place and not touristy at all. It's a really cool and beautiful place to see. And not far from Gretek is Savannah Chianyar. So basically in the dry season in Bali, the grass here turns kind of yellow and makes it kind of resemble a bit of a savanna. And it's pretty beautiful with the big volcano in the background. A very unique place uh, for Bali that you don't really find many other places. Another waterfall and this is Banjumala Twin Waterfalls. So this waterfall is up towards the north of Bali where there are tons of waterfall. This is just one of the beautiful ones and we particularly enjoyed swimming in this one. And not too far from that we got another waterfall. This one is called Banjuwana Ametha Waterfall. Again I probably butchered the pronunciation. This one is also really unique and it's a pretty cool hike to get here. So close to Ubud there's this place called Kretja, I think. Basically think a beach club, but in the middle of the jungle and the rice fields. There's some really cool pools, beautiful views, good food. A bit of a party vibe though with some very loud music already at like 11 a.m. But besides that, pretty amazing place. Next is Tamplingang Lake and the temple right next to it. So this is also up in the north and you can then drive down to this lake that sits in between the mountains. If you're staying in Ubud, you should definitely check out Kampuhan Ridge Walk. It's pretty much located in the middle of Ubud and it's this hike you go on, on a, well, ridge, and just get some beautiful nature and beautiful views. I especially re recommend going for a hike here in the morning. Really peaceful vibes. The final waterfall on this list is going to be Suwat waterfall. Another beautiful one if you're into doing that waterfall hunting. And then we got Thomas Beach, yet another beautiful beach down in Uluwatu. This one was one of my personal favorites. And the next one is a very cool place called Pasut Beach. You go here because you're able to take your scooter or motorbike and just ride on the beach, which is very fun. But be careful, of course. And then we got another one that's actually not in Bali. But if you're going to Bali, you should definitely go to the Gili Islands. It's three small islands off the coast of Lombok and it's a few hours boat ride away from Bali. And these islands definitely got that real island vibe. They're small, there's no motorized vehicle, the beaches are amazing, the snorkeling is amazing, there's turtles everywhere. So if you can, definitely check out the Gili Islands. But Indonesia is home to something like 17,000 islands. So why do most people go to Bali? Well, of course, Bali is very unique with its culture and religion, and the island is just beautiful. But that doesn't mean that you shouldn't look beyond Bali. If you have the time, I really recommend visiting other islands in Indonesia as well. And you don't have to look that far from Bali to find some amazing places, making it very easy to combine with your trip to Bali. Of course, we've already touched on the Gili Islands, which are just these amazing little islands, just a few hours away from Bali, right off the coast of Lombok. And Lombok could also really be worth a visit. A lot of people say that Lombok is kind of like how Bali was 20 years ago. Now, I didn't go to Bali 20 years ago, so I wouldn't know, but I guess if you want a more raw and untouched and an experience with less other tourists, Lombok could be a good place for you to go. Another place that I can really recommend is going to the island of Flores. It's just a one hour flight away from Bali and a lot of people actually come here to go visit the Komodo National Park. 
Now I haven't done that yet, but it comes highly recommended. But there's this one place, a tiny little private island with just one hotel on it that has to be one of my favorite places that I have visited in Indonesia. It's called Le Pirate Island and I'll just show you a little bit from the island and from the place that we stayed. Okay, so it's time to check out this private island right here. So it's actually a very small island that's close to a bigger island called Flores, which is about a one hour flight away from Bali. So you fly to the place called Labuan Bajo. And usually people come here to go visit the Komodo National Park, which is very close to here. But it could definitely be worth it to stay in this place. So there's one hotel on this island and that's it. And it's called the Pirate Island. So it's really just this beautiful tropical island with crystal clear waters and amazing reefs for snorkeling and a lot of marine life out here. And because it is like a remote island, it's very, I guess, basic. It's kind of like glamping here. So I'll show you the hut in just a second. We're staying in one of the fancier glamping huts with its own bathroom, but there's also this very small hut where you have then have a shared bathroom. In here it is just a really simple little glamping tent essentially with the bed here, a little deck where Sally's taking a nap and then of course the real selling point here we're right on the beach and just wake up to this amazing view every morning there's no AC, there's no fan here like when we're sleeping we just put down the mosquito net and leave the tent open so a little bit of a breeze passes through and it does get a little bit hot but it hasn't actually been too bad now as you can see we do have electricity here and everything runs on solar but there is no wi-fi and the if you have a local sim card the cell reception is really really bad so it is a place to completely disconnect but let's check out the bathroom which is right behind me That's all I had to show you for today. So I hope you found some inspiration in where perhaps you could be staying on your trip to Bali.